I made this video to help inform more people why the outer production Machine Drum UW Plus Mark II might be the superior choice to the Fancy Pants brand new Analog Rhythm Mark II. Before we get into my itemized list of why the machine drum rules and the rhythm drools, let's take a look at the description blurbs in the manuals relating to the inspirations behind each device. The machine drum has a thoughtful and historical look on why the machine was even developed in the first place, citing concrete influences and a desire to advance the state of electronic music production and performance. In comparison, the rhythm manual blurb comes off as a rather trite and fluffy marketing spiel offering very little of substance or value. It's just advertising copy. After I read the Mark II manual, I began to feel this emphasis on style over substance is present at all levels in the design. But perhaps that's just my natural inclination to being turned off by heavy-handed marketing. The analog rhythm, both Mark I and Mark II, are fantastic instruments. I'm an electron fetishist, so really I'm happy with all electron devices, to a certain extent. But the thing is, is that I'm a little more particular about which devices I'm willing to get into a more serious relationship with. While making this video, I went down to a local music store, Rock and Roll Vintage, also known as Synth City here in Chicago, to try out the Analog Rhythm Mark II for myself. This is a great store with a lot of synth gear, so check it out if you get the chance. They have no knowledge that I even make videos, so this isn't any sort of advertisement. I simply asked if it was cool to take some pictures and video while I was there. Every time I go, the rooms that they have for trying out equipment get more and more decked out, and it's set up really well at the moment. I definitely had some fun using the rhythm, and there were certainly a lot of things to be attracted to about the sound and features. However, there are a number of reasons this beautiful and sleekly silver machine might actually be the superior choice. And, you know, we all like to root for the underdog, right? If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you're reasonably familiar with these two fine pieces of equipment. Which one would you prefer? Maybe you already have one, or, or both? I'd like to hear about your experiences with these two instruments down in the comment section. And I'd especially love it for rhythm owners to school me on all the awesome stuff it does that I'm going to conveniently leave out of this video, as this video is all about machine drum love. More voices, arbitrary choke groups. The analog rhythm has 12 voices, but essentially only eight independent audio channels, with eight of the voices being part of four predefined choke pairs. In comparison, the machine drum has 16 available voices with completely arbitrary choke pairs, as well as a trigger relate function for easily layering sounds on two different tracks. The machine drum absolutely destroys the rhythm on this aspect. Huge variety of machines that could be placed on any track. The machine drum has multiple families of related sound generators available. Each family is based on a different subset of synthesis and or sampling techniques. Any machine can be placed on any track, giving you huge customization. In comparison, due to its fundamentally analog nature, the rhythm has a rather short list of machines available to select from, and only certain tracks can use certain machines. Once again, the analog rhythm has a hard time keeping up with the variety here. Despite the excellent qualities of its analog circuitry, as well as the high quality sample playback that it offers. MIDI sequencing. A big complaint I've seen floating around the internet about the analog rhythm is that it has no MIDI sequencing whatsoever. It will send MIDI clock and MIDI sync messages, and that's it. However, one of the machines on the machine drum is a MIDI sequencer, allowing you to turn any track into one channel of MIDI sequencing. If you don't even want any sounds, you, you could have 16 tracks of MIDI sequencing on the machine drum. Even just one track of MIDI sequencing would be a huge bonus for the rhythm. Further, since the machine drum is a MIDI sequencer, there's also the possibility of using MIDI loopback techniques, increasing the advanced options and experimental opportunities, while mitigating or eliminating some of the fundamental limitations. Song mode BPM. I did not know this until very recently, as the only product from the Electron Analog series that I own is the heat. But both the Analog 4 and the Analog Rhythm do not have the ability to set beats per minute in their song mode. So there is no ability to associate a particular BPM with a particular pattern inside the rhythm. It's not something I always need to do, 
But when I want it, there's no substitute. Recorder triggs for real-time sampling power. The Analog Rhythm Mark I can't record samples at all. And the Mark II version doesn't have recorder triggs. One of the most amazing features of the Machine Drum UW and the Octatrack. Recorder triggs allow for control and automation of real-time sampling far beyond that available in any other hardware samplers that I'm aware of. Not e having even just one record trig track available on the Rhythm Mark II makes me rather sad. 12-bit sampling with character. The Machine Drum UW isn't just any sampler. As the manual states quite plainly, it is meant to emulate the character of old school samplers, specifically the legendary 12-bit SP-1200. This gives everything a characteristically gritty, crunchy, and fuzzy, but punchy sound that oozes presence and character. You can end up in some very cliched places and have a lot of fun that way, but there's also lots of other far more uncharted territory to explore. One thing in particular that jumps out at me about the way the Machine Drum UW acts as a sampler is the way that it repitches samples and, and the quality of the repitching. It's absolutely nothing like anything I can get out of a DAW or the Octatrack. It's certainly not trying to be faithful to the original sound of the sample, but I find it often has a much wider musically useful range than most other samplers I've used, which makes it very inspiring. Rich and extensive voice architecture. So, voice architecture. L let's just do the basics. D does the rhythm have EQ on every channel? Does the rhythm have a per track amplitude modulator? Does it have per track sample rate reduction? C can, can the LFOs be assigned across tracks? The answers are no, 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 and no, in case you were wondering. Classic slash extended switch. Now, I know the rhythm has fills and trigger conditions and performance mode and scenes and all that jazz. And the classic extended switch on the machine drum seems rather pedestrian in comparison, when the main function is simply to enable and disable parameter locks. And you basically get a couple dozen of these types of performance controls on the rhythm kits uh, when you combine the scenes and the um, performances. However, the classic extended switch has one other very important function. When you are in classic mode, kits are not associated with patterns. When you go back to extended mode, the kit associated with the pattern will reload when the pattern repeats. This offers some interesting performance possibilities and often sparks musical ideas when moving between different patterns that have different kits. This extra layer of optional abstraction is extraordinarily simple in implementation, but speaks powerfully to the open-ended philosophy that pervades the design of the Machine Drum UW. There's simply no comparable feature on the rhythm, and I would also love to be able to disassociate patterns from parts on the Octatrack as well. It's very useful for improvisation to have this extra layer of abstraction. Very simple, very powerful. Input machines. The machine drum is a competent processor of external signals, going far beyond the basics offered in the rhythm, with the powerful voice architecture of the machine drum available for processing input signals. Also, these input machines go beyond simple audio through for the downstream voice processing, and include an input machine with an envelope follower as well as an input machine that has two triggerable envelopes. Audio inputs can also be trigger inputs. The designers of the machine drum decided they wanted some compatibility with piezo drum triggers, like those used by electronic drum kits, presumably so the machine drum could be easily used and tri triggered by a traditional drummer simply as a sound module. I have no idea how many people have actually used this feature, but considering how few owners even know that it's possible, I'm, I'm guessing not many. However, you don't need to send in triggers by smacking some piezos around. You can just hook it up to a trigger sequencer. So by using one audio input for the output of an oscillator, for example, and the other audio input to take a trigger stream from your modular, uh, you can use the machine drum as a triggered envelope filter and VCA. How many drum machines can do that? Definitely not the analog rhythm. 
Instant pattern switch via external MIDI notes. Some really cool possibilities exist with the external pattern control via MIDI notes feature. And there are so many other things that I'm still learning about the machine drum. It's going to take me a while to even try it out. There are some very interesting options and features here that offer the potential for fascinating performance control as well as compositional possibilities using external controllers and sequencers, or perhaps just MIDI loopback. Control all. This one is so basic, and, and you would think with scenes and performance macros and all that fancy stuff, you wouldn't miss out on the control all feature, but you'd be wrong. I think it has a lot to do with how primitive the control all feature is and how it works very well for improvisation. Let's take a look at what the manual has to say about it. Specifically, note that the values of the manipulated parameters may not be restored when you turn them back the same amount of steps you first changed them. Now, this is one of those cases where something that might seem like a bug is actually a feature, often leading to unexpected parameter interactions and drastically altered kits and patterns. LFOs can be routed to control any other track and even control other LFOs. LFOs being able to control other LFOs and parameters on other tracks is amazing and a massive reason the Machine Drum UW is essentially a modular system in a box. My only disappointment regarding this wide open modulation matrix is that I want more modulation sources. However, considering the original design of the Machine Drum is over 15 years old, it's a bit hard to complain though, and 16 LFOs is nothing to sneeze at. Master EQ. While researching for this video, I, I found out that the rhythm has no master EQ, and it's just another reason I'm glad I bought the machine drum instead. The mixing and tone shaping possibilities are incredibly powerful, and all of the master and send effects parameters can be automated, just like on the rhythm but with many more opportunities for modulation. Flexible audio busing. Although the rhythm does offer individual outs for the channels, the machine drum's outputs are extraordinarily flexible, being able to act not just as individual outs when desired, but also as submixes. For the way I like to use the machine, this is a big advantage. Over the long term, openness and flexibility tends to win out. Conclusion. I'm well aware the rhythm has many things to offer that the machine drum does not, both all over the dashboard and under the hood. But on the whole, I find the machine drum UW offers a much more open and flexible design, and its feature set combines very harmoniously to make it just as attractive, if not more so, than the current Electron flagship drum machine, the Analog Rhythm Mark II. It's really a testament to the brilliance of the design. The Machine Drum UW is a true modern classic. I suppose I'd sum it up like this. The Machine Drum UW is essentially a modular system in a box, architected as a drum machine. Whereas the rhythm is primarily a badass groove box, both for composition and performance, but unfortunately doesn't approach the extreme flexibility and depth the machine drum has to offer, both internally and when interacting with other gear. Are there any diehard rhythm owners I've convinced by now to give the MDUW a, a closer look? Maybe some people dropped the machine drum to pick up a rhythm and, and regretted it. I'd like to hear your stories. I also know there's at least a few more things I didn't discuss that the machine drum has the edge on over the rhythm. So let me know down in the comments. Thank you.